And, um, you know, you guys might have noticed that this month I released a bunch of videos specifically talking about the homeless issue uh, because they were talking about ending rent moratoriums at the end of March. And I wanted to address what's going on with the homeless since capitalism is manufacturing a whole new uh, whole new generation of homeless people. Uh, so I want to start with uh, with Pittsburgh because this is where I live. This is my hometown where our our delightful mayor, the quote progressive is is what is what they call themselves. Right. But he's just he's just a neoliberal shill. And, you know, Ron Placone and I talked about this uh, on on Wednesday when when I did get your news on with Ron. And, you know, he talked about how at first we all were kind of excited about Bill Peduto because we thought that he was going to be different than uh, any other politician, and it turned out that he's no different. He's just a neoliberal shill, um, and he he kind of parrots the democratic establishment narrative, ignores real uh, real progressive solutions. He gaslit the uh, in the beginning of the pandemic. He was like gaslighting uh, sanitation workers for not providing them uh, PPEs. You know they weren't getting gloves. They weren't getting masks. And, you know, the way that he um, the way that Peduto uh, framed it was, oh, the masks will cause more harm than good. When the national narrative was you have to wear masks to prevent covid, you had somebody that didn't want to pay these people hazard uh, hazard pay and give them the equipment required to do their jobs. He was saying, oh, the masks will hinder them. That the mass will make your job harder. So he was gaslighting them and trying to veer public support away from uh, standing in solidarity with uh, with the the sanitation workers, right? So this is who Bill Peduto is. He also like he he's more he's he's more mayor photo op than he is anything else. You know, we talked about how he's increasing the police budgets, which he's using to basically criminalize the homeless population in Pittsburgh. They're being sent to jail uh, for panhandling and theft is what they're what they 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 imprison these people for. He increased the police budgets and he is essentially not supporting any of the tenants that have lost their jobs. Uh, you know, last week we talked about how uh, he increased the police budget for this year by 5.1 percent in the middle of people calling for defunding the police. And he reduced firefighting budgets. He reduced EMS budgets. Uh, he reduced the police over the citizen uh, police oversight committee's budget. Uh, so this guy is a neoliberal shill, and for him to increase the police budgets and to throw homeless people in prison while not really trying to help the issue is exacerbating the problem. And not only that, but he's contributing to increasing the homeless population um, by upholding loopholes in. Um, within these moratorium laws, right? Um, I don't know if they received a new extension or not in terms of moratoriums. And by the way, moratoriums are just stopgap measures. That's all they are. Uh, you know, you don't have to pay rent this month, but you will have to pay rent at the end. Uh, when when all things are said and done, when the moratorium is lifted, now, now, now somebody has to pay five or six months worth of rent. Um, instead of uh, instead of just the the one month's rent that they could barely afford, right? So if you're going to do a moratorium on rent, then you need to increase the minimum wage. Uh, you need to get hazard pay for a lot of these people. You need to get rid of any sort of interest rate that these landlords might charge. You have to put a we have to put a law stating that they can't do that, uh, and. Uh, really the only real solution to ensure that the homeless population doesn't grow in this current situation is to cancel rents and debt. Um, and this includes like if it's a bank owned structure, if it's a bank owned building, right? If you're a small landlord and you are in a, you know, like, like let's say it's in a house like this where you're renting rooms uh, and part of that rent goes to pay off the mortgage that you purchase on the house. Well, great. Well, th that moratorium is going to be helpful for these small landlords as well. 
or rather not the moratorium, the cancellation is going to be helpful for these small landlords as well because they're asking to cancel the mortgages as well, the mortgages associated with these with these homes as well. So, so you know, when people come at me and I and I say we got to cancel the rents, and they go, "Oh, well, how are these landlords supposed to earn a or earn a living?" Well, first of all, most of these landlords, these ten, these these real estate companies that own buildings, and I've lived in a couple of them, so I can tell you that their rents are jacked up. They don't provide the right services. Uh, you know, when shit breaks. They don't really come and help you out. Like I've lived in privately owned, like private rents, like houses like this that are rooms for rent. And I can tell you that if I call my landlord today with a problem within 24 to 48 hours, they're over here fixing it themselves and taking care of the problem, taking care of the issue. Um, you know, so that that's that's what we're talking about. These these bigger rental companies aren't hurting for money. They're already overcharging rent. Uh, and, you know, like these people will be fine. These people will be fine. Um, and the other the other reality, too, is they're also the type of people that end up getting bailed out by the government. And these are the, uh, not the people whose property that like cities and stuff will just overturn. Right. That's that's what they kind of want. And I'll get into the, the details of this a little bit, a little bit more. But Really, the reason for people to be kicked out of their homes in a lot of these neighborhoods, they count on that. They count on people to get kicked out of their homes in a lot of these neighborhoods is because they want big real estate developers to come in and buy up property and buy up these homes and buy up these uh, vacant lots and things of that sort so that they can gentrify them and put shit in place. You know, like who the fuck needs another TGI Fridays? I don't. I, I don't care like i think when i was in college i enjoyed tgi fridays because when you're 18 and you can get eight six appetizers for four dollars it's like kind of a big deal but when you grow up and you're like oh no that's not real food <laughs> i should eat more legitimate food like no one needs that shit they did this shit in south bend that's what mayor pete did in south bend that's why he's not uh, a well-liked individual uh, if you talk to anybody from South Bend, if you talk to people outside South Bend, liberals outside South Bend loved him, but they don't know his record. They just know that he is a, he is a uh, the first gay Democratic uh, presidential nominee that plays the piano and has a couple of degrees. But this guy's a neoliberal shill. He was he was bred in a fucking think tank uh, specifically to fuck over middle America. And that's what's happening. They're trying to displace these homeless people in a lot of these cities by criminalizing them. Um, where they, And then they don't have anywhere to go. They end up in prison. Uh, so a lot of these people also have jobs and they go to their job and then they have to live out on the streets uh, or sleep in a park or sleep in a vacant uh, parking lot or what have you. And now they're, they're criminalizing that, making it much harder for these people to just live their lives in an already very difficult situation. So instead of looking for viable solutions like housing first um, or canceling rents, they they do these stopgap measures of, well, we'll do rent moratoriums, but we'll put these loopholes in so that if landlords still need to evict people, they can get away with it. And that's, and that's what's happening in Pittsburgh. That's what's happening in Allegheny County and Westmoreland County, right? Uh, and there's really nobody to stop them from doing it because all the loopholes are paperwork related. So if you want to extend your 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 rent moratorium or or if or if you get an eviction notice and you want to push back against it, well, the tenant has to fill out this form. And if they don't fill this form perfectly, then they still get evicted because the form is is void. Even the tiniest mistake can void the whole form. Uh, do the do the landlords have to do that? I don't see the landlords having to do that. So that's that's what's really happening in Pittsburgh is you're you're going to wind up having a lot more people that at the end of this and again I don't know if the moratorium is lifted in the beginning of April or not the last time I checked it was that it it ends it ends tomorrow right it ends tomorrow and there's going to be a lot more people out on the streets because you know they can't pay their bills. 
uh, or they used that measly fucking fourteen hundred dollars, which should have been two thousand dollars, which really should have been two thousand dollars a month. Uh, they're going to use that that measly stimulus and they're going to put it towards paying off their bills. Well, if they haven't been able to pay rent for four or five months, that rent has accumulated. And I'm pretty sure fourteen hundred dollars or a percentage of fourteen hundred dollars isn't really going to fucking cover it. Which means the landlords then say, well, you haven't paid your rent for X amount of months and now we have to evict you. And within 30 to 60 days, they get evicted. So by May or June, we're going to wind up seeing a massive increase in evictions and a massive increase in the homeless population. And again, all that can be canceled. All that can be taken care of by canceling the rent. And this is something they could have done at the very beginning of the pandemic. And at worst, they could have done this when Biden got into office. If the Democrats really wanted to, to show that they cared about the American people, instead of waging this fucking war against progressives for calling them out on their bullshit, they could have actually done something that the progressives were talking about. And, you know, even on like the most base of political platforms, you could have been like, see, we did something progressive. Now shut the fuck up. If that even if that was the thing, like you could have at least done that. But they didn't. What they're choosing to do is enforce a stopgap measure, criminalize being homeless, increase the homeless population and try to gentrify neighborhoods where people are going to lose their homes. All right, I want to look at a couple comments before we go to the next city. Uh, so is de Blasio better than Cuomo? Yeah, de Blasio is another one. You know, they, they, they're starting to tout these, really, they're just Republicans. These Democrats that are mayors of these cities and, and governors of these states, they're, they're touting them to be these champions of progressivism when in reality they're just... They're just neoliberal fucks that don't really care and, and they're waiting for the banks to seize these properties so that they can overturn it to and, and build new strip malls across the country so that people can uh, endlessly consume. Masks will hinder makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, no, n n yeah, that was kind of the argument of like, there's this big narrative going around about wearing masks to protect people. And, you know, it, 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 I, I choose to wear a mask when I go out in public and, uh, if I'm, you know, entering a, a grocery store or, what, or a gas station or whatever, like I'm still wearing my mask. So why would the why would you go again? You know, why would you say that for people they need to wear a mask? But then when it comes to essential, the people that are calling essential workers, when they require the PPEs, like you said, there's no PPEs in jails either. When they require that, you you, you flip the narrative and go, no, 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 no. It's actually bad for you to wear a mask. So, but that's, that's the way it works. And they, they can't come out and say like, well, we don't support the strike and we don't support the labor movement. So we're, we're not going to meet your demands. And if you stay in strike, that's fine. We'll fire you because all of that makes the mayor look really bad. Uh, moratoriums are just delays and we should cancel rents. Absolutely. Uh, wasn't there a pay, payment protection program for small businesses and small landlords? Yeah, but from what I can understand, that's, again, another stopgap measure. Uh, a lot of small businesses were able to kind of use it. But Graham Elwood was just talking about there's fine prints where you, where you might have to pay that back at some point or pay that back in taxes or something. Um, so at the end of the day, it's, again, a short-term benefit for a long-term con. Um, they're not actually granting anybody money. They're just kind of letting these businesses fail. And again, if they're if these people's livelihoods are gone, they'll g go on a rent moratorium. And then at the end of that moratorium, they'll have to pay five or six months worth of back rent within a month or however long. And they can't do it. And even if they say like, OK, well, y you have all this debt accumulated, we'll add an extra 10 percent to your rent. <clears throat> well, that extra 10 percent might only be 40 or 50 bucks a month which isn't going to do a, 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 a lot of good when you're trying to pay back that much money you know and and then if they say we're also going to add an interest rate to it well then you know really what that is is like five percent and you're really not paying that down 
but that's the cycle of trapping you. It's like, okay, well, you can either choose to be homeless, which we're now making illegal, or you can be in a financial trap. Those are the options that are going to be thrown out to people. Um, and again, when you have a, a, a party that claims it's the party of the people and sides with the people and all that, like the Democrats do, but refuse to increase minimum wage, refuse a, a UPI, refuse Medicare for all, uh, and put the burden of, um, of, of keeping people afloat during a pandemic on the people itself, because realistically, mutual aids and personal donations have, have helped out people more than the government has. You, you know, I, I see the mutual aid network working a lot stronger than the government stimulus plan is. Like, so, you know, where do we turn to? We just turn to each other anyway. So so the PPP, the, the PPP program doesn't really work that great. Uh, Holly also says at last report, CDC moratorium until June. Okay. So, so they gave, so they gave us till June that we can't be evicted. Um, sad to say they don't care. Yeah. They don't really want to overturn any of this stuff. They just don't give a shit. And that, and that's the, that's the reality that we're facing here. Um, folks over at Rockfin, hello. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, uh you know, feel free to leave the comments over on Rockfin as well. Uh, I will I will read them as they come. Unfortunately, I can't pull them up on the stream stream yet because uh, of uh, uh, Streamyard doesn't have that have that capability just yet. There's a homeless industrial complex, shelters, etc. Yeah, so that's the other thing that uh, we'll, we'll look at we'll look into a little bit more in detail because there's a video that I'll I'll play uh, when we get to Minneapolis. They, they talk about how the shelters, uh, you know, have very strict rules. And again, they're kind of stopgap measures uh, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, Syrup C says they're training people for anarchism. Well, again, these homeless encampments that kind of end up forming have their own kind of communal structure, too. Uh, and some of these people are choosing to be homeless. That's that's for sure. I, I talked about that in my show, but that's not everybody. A lot of these people are trying to look for, you know, had a had a bad uh, series of events that led them to become homeless. Uh, you know, some of them are trying to kick their addictions. Some of them are trying to just, some of them are, are they have jobs, but the, the you know, the, the pay is so bad. The pay is so low. They can't afford rent and a car payment and health insurance and so on and so forth and and not having an address really fucking hurts man uh, so they make a, they have to make a choice you know do i keep the vehicle that can help me get to work and back um or do i keep the home that will kind of give me a sense of stability and and they you know like that's the choice people have to make and in reality they shouldn't have to make that choice uh if you are on it, you know, tough financial grounds to the point where you might not be able to pay rent. There should be a program in place that can help you with that, that erases your rent or, you know, uh, housing like transitional housing facilities. If, if Fiorella over on the Convo Couch mentioned that, and I think that's what the Housing First programs are somewhat intended to be, but they also just provide houses for the homeless, houses for the unhoused. It's a very simple way to kind of solve the problem um so yeah uh thank you so much for checking out this video if you enjoyed this content uh please make sure that you hit the like button hit the share button and make sure you're subscribed to my channel whether it's on rockfin youtube or facebook especially facebook and youtube they often uncensor people, uh, un unsubscribe people, and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual 
comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. And go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. And I hope to see you at the next video.